This is the Levels Network. I'm Justin Aldo, joined by the Triple OG, Widimu Mason. It is round four preview time, brother. It's fine. It is fine. We're Can't getting wait. into the season, aren't we? Some big <laughs> games. I love Easter weekend too. How long does it take us to get us a real, like, you know, how's that team going, right? Ooh. We, we said about 10, don't we? Say about 10? Yep. Four's like, you know. I think you, you start. start ruling off teams at four. I can rule one off. Yeah. Who are you? Titans. <laughs> <laughs> play two Straight well. away, done. They haven't even two, played three. Two when I'm done with them. Okay. Can't lose one of the best forwards in the world. True. You cannot oh, lose that. Okay, so that you plays into it. That yeah. Soon, soon, I can only say that right now because Tino is out. Yeah. They okay. still had Tino. I'm still, I still hope. All right. Still we'll, hope because Fafita is coming back. All that sort of stuff. We'll get to that. But I'm like, right now, it's nearly, it's wooden spoon. That's interesting. Well, we don't have this story. I seen it was, you know, Braith and, and the gang were talking about it on 360. Apparently, Sorry, Des. everyone knows the, the get out calls that David Fafida has. No, I didn't know that. Can you oh, you didn't, you didn't know? No. So, yeah, this wasn't a part of the show, but fuck it, we're here. Um, apparently, David Fafida put in a clause before round 10. He wanted to get a feel for Desi and the coaching staff and how the team was going. Oh. Uh, he can he can leave before round ten at any point. He can neutralize the contract, and <laughs> I dare say then just move on to another team if he deems. Yeah, well, he well he's obviously like looking. Look at have a look at the structure. Look if it's built around him. You just lost Tino. Mm. Is does he like the coaching? He and he has every right to walk because yep. it's in his contract. In he wouldn't put that in his contract. So don't be surprised if he's playing for another team. What's yeah. your what's your gut feeling on that situation? You only just learned about the contract then. I'm just telling you yeah. now. Uh, judge, judging by that, you just said you don't think the Titans are going to be. Are you putting a line through the Titans. What I do think, you think? David I think it's a going? smart move from David Fafita. Mm. It's a great move. Mm. You know what I mean? Just sussing out how the how the how the team's going to go, the coaching's going to go. If he doesn't like it, he's got every right to walk away. He said he's obviously had conversations with. The Titans, yep. everyone like they know he has a right to walk away. So if he does, don't act surprised. He can't restructure it though. So it, it's purely like he wanted to get a feel for the new vibe. Uh, he obviously – remember he re-signed the back of last year because he had a cause. Yeah. I think they maybe yeah. both had a cause. I could be wrong. I know Tino did for sure mm. with uh, Justin Holbrook getting sacked. Yeah. So they had that in that cause in there to begin with that yeah. kept him at the Titans. And then when he when he signed his new deal, he put in – he wanted to get a feel okay. before round 10. So Wouldn't be feeling uh, that good right now. You've just learned about the, the contract situation just off the top of your head. Who would be – a team a that suitor? you think, yeah, who would be in the market for David Fafita? Would you got to remember? You got to take in consideration that by the time if he ends up leaving just before round ten, maybe sixty to seventy percent of his contract would be paid. So mm -hmm. essentially, you'd be getting a a million dollar back rower yeah. for three hundred thousand yeah. for the year. It'd be huge. I, if he was a front row, I know there'd be a lot more suitors, but because he's a left side back row predominantly, yeah, you're probably looking like just say with everyone be saying the Bulldogs. No, because we've got kick out. He's one mm. of the best back rows in the Jacob game. Jacob Preston looks really you good. You know, as Jacob well. Preston's got it got it going on, you know, he's a good young kid as the future of the club. You look at the Tigers maybe. The Tigers have a really good left side back row. They're not as dominant. Now, yeah. You could name them, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, but it's course. not like you, you can you can fit him around there. You can push Bateman to lock all that kind of stuff and sort of yep. go for get Bolle off the bench a little bit more, get yep. a little bit more game time. Yep. I think actually, I'm look, I've been watching Bateman recently first two games, yeah. and I think he's, he's getting up there, bro. I think he's looks like he's got to move to the middle. Yeah, soon, he get, he's getting up there. Later. He's getting up there. Yeah. You know, so um. What's some other teams? There wouldn't be that many out there. I'd I'd would be leaning more towards contenders, most for the point where you're getting him for a discount. So Titans would be paying him roughly six hundred, maybe five to six hundred thousand mm. of his contract this year. Yeah. And then the team that would pick him up would pick him up for maybe two fifty three hundred this year. Then obviously the price tag that comes with that after. But you know who you know where he'd kill it. Where I know Sean Lane's their boy, but Parramatta, he's got Dylan Brown there. I know Lane's like he's he's yeah. he's their left side back row. I know, yeah. but like. Dave Fafita on his best day is better than every left side back rower in the comp mm. on his day. He's yeah. most destructive Him when he has kicks. when he has a lot. Yeah, when he has a lot of diversion around when he's getting one on ones. No yeah. one's better. Yeah, he's an animal in a great system. He's with, an animal with Dylan Brown as yes, the game over. That's what I'm saying. You put yeah. him in that system, you're like shit. You know, Roosters left side back row. I don't think Roosters would. I think they're too. I think they've got too many players. Oh, too many back rows. Look, let's just rule them out. And like, South Sydney, South. Yes. South's Kalama a huge Tungi one. on the right, put the feeder on the left. Then you has been playing right his yeah. majority of his career. South's are the one that stand out. Yeah. If they were to get their shit together and add a David Fafida, yeah. that is like For a – For cheap, right? 
I think, yeah, for cheap, yeah, 300,000. You're, you're getting him for not, You're getting him, you know. And the other one. Uh, he's, he's on looked, the dollar. He's looked really good in his first two games. He missed last week. Melbourne Storm. Yeah. Someone like Melbourne that. Storm Imagine him under Bellamy under one year. Outside Munster. Ooh. For a one-year deal and then maybe, maybe he goes back into the – maybe he, you know, he, he backs himself – you know, walks away from a fucking multi-million dollar deal, has a crack, tries to win a premiership yeah. somewhere. And not saying the Rabbitohs, because I know a lot of people are going to be, yeah, Rabbitohs with fucking Owen 3. But if they had David Fafida, yeah. that's a – my – the, I think the big – you know, there's been some big changes that have happened at South, yeah. but they really lack on the left edge back row. So they've moved Colum and, years. T- Colum and Tungy over to the left to try to help that, but it's really weakened their right edge. Um, and, I, and I dare say – a Colum and Tungy will be back on the right yeah. this this week with Jacob Host playing on the left. And Jacob Host is a Host solid is right. player, yeah. but David Fafita is different level. Uh, and then uh, and then their right wing spot they've sort of been flirting with, and even with Alex Johnson, really good try scorer, but their mm. wingers positions is sort of a uh, a position of need as well. Even like a Cowboys for one year. Put him on that left edge. With I think Cowboys Luffy, wouldn't. I don't think Luffy, Cowboys would because they got, got Fenny Fuyaki. Yeah. But like you play him off the bench, he's a beast. I'm yeah. just saying for one year. Yeah. If he wants to go and chase a ring. Yeah. For Dep- one year depends on the health of Luki mm. uh, with this ankle yeah. syndesmosis. So if they're going to get him back, I think that would cause more headaches than anything yeah. because they're trying to re-sign both those kids. I'm not saying I hate saying kids like that, but yeah. Luki and Fenny Fuyaki. They're twenty. Um, they're twenty. <laughs> And then it wouldn't surprise me with all the players they've let go in cap space. They've, like, because they would have cap space left too as the Panthers. Like, they could do it to Vita Pangai Jr. Imagine if they did. They could do it to Vita Pangai Jr. They have enough. Because they, they, let, they had to leave Critic go, which they would have accounted for 650 in their cap. Luai's gone now. Um, Luai's leaving next year. But yeah. so specifically this year, Spencer Lenu, they would have probably had 500 in their cap for him. But they weren't able to keep him because he goes for potentially, you know, six fifty seven. That's the one I'd be looking at. So <laughs> <laughs> if I was David Fafita, I'd be looking at Penrith. Imagine if he goes to Penrith. That'd God. Be... Anyway. Imagine if he leaves. Sorry, Titans fans. No, we're, just Titans, him... we're just thinking. We just, we just put first, him... We just watched your first two games yeah. in there. Fucking <laughs> awful. <laughs> uh, speaking of Gold Coast, mate, our little mate, Luke, yeah. he's got the fight of his life just Ooh. like – the Titans to keep David Fafita. Uh, he will be fighting at the Gold Coast Convention Centre. Follow Alpha Events on Instagram for all the updates. I know my mate's getting into it now. He's been yeah. getting into the gym. Shadow work. boxing. He's, he's shadow boxing in there. He's been shadow, I can see him now. Yeah, look, look at him. him. He's getting into his Good work. Good jab. He's sweating. Oh, there's Randy Matur. Randy's getting in there as well. It's <laughs> shadow box. It's on. It's on. Um, as always, uh, thank you to everyone who has been uh, subscribing and following the podcast of late. The numbers are just going through the roof. Mm. Uh, the episode on Monday really hit uh, yeah. in particular. I always ask Lukey why. Why does it hit a particular like show like that? Yeah. Is it because of the young kid? Young Because it's Turbo, you know? It's young like talent. A bit of both, right? Yeah. Because Turbo so popular and then you've got a young kid just going through his chest. Um, people like, – there were a few comments and look – I. There are comments that I respond to on, on YouTube, which we'll, we'll get to soon, which we build out our, our uh, that I help build out our show. But really, um, the ones on Instagram can get a bit willy nilly and go over the top. And a lot of people were questioning uh, the uh, the defensive abilities of Tommy Turbo, saying, "Oh, that's nothing." Tom, like, go back and watch Shut the film. Up. Like, Tommy's been injured for a couple of years now, but at his peak. peak. Um, not many people do that to, no. to Tommy Turbo. He is a different beast. And Tommy got there with plenty of time. He could have made the tackle. And I think it's a positive. Give the kitty flowers. It's a great run. Definitely deserved it. And give us the flowers on Instagram, on Apple, on Spotify. Leave us a podcast review or subscribe. Um, I want to thank our partners, BSC, as always, for the BSC energy drinks. If you haven't tried them yet, uh, it has 160 milligrams of caffeine, no sugar, no carbs. It has to be tested. And that's important because us athletes, Mace, or, or past athletes, we're still getting we're still getting after it. And BSC are just about to announce the rest of the team for the Aqua Rugby team that we'll be playing in, in a couple of weeks. In the harbour, mate. So. You're all right. There'll be some solid hits there, man. Yeah. I'm very wary of that. Have you watched some of the highlights of yeah. it? Yeah. People get lifted. Yeah. Some of You're slipping into stuff. I'm slipping. Someone catches you with a forearm. Yeah. Don't, it's on. Don't be swinging it. It's on. Do not be swinging It'll be cocked like that. Yeah. And you might be having a few beverages on the day. Yeah. And they, maybe you might some loosen of, up the blow. Maybe some BSC energy <laughs> drinks mixed <laughs> with in some with vodka. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate. Let's get into YouTube questions. Yeah. Uh, I've got a, a fair few this week. Nothing really. 
uh, in the topics that excited me. But we'll talk a little bit about Kevy extending uh, oh, to yeah. the end of well 2026. Uh, but let's kick it off. And this is a two-part question. This is two questions that I've meshed into one. So how good was it seeing Moses and Brooks go at each other on Sunday? They both threw heaps of plays at each other, trying to spot them, spot each other up. Uh, there was a little bit of verbal that I noticed as well. Both held their own in a narrow points win to Moses. Makes me wonder, what are some of the best friends off the field, enemies on it, rivalries you can think of? Mace, I've got one that stands out that I'd like to know about, particularly some of some that the fans might not be aware of as well, some players that you, you love going against, Mace. And this one's from Johnny Lloyd, and it's sort of similar. All right, lads, just listen to the question about JP and talking about Moz. All right, lads, he must be uh, Pommy as well too, 100%. by the way. Mace, what would your preparation be Monday to Friday knowing you were coming up against an enforcer like Morley, for example, knowing they would be doing homework on you as you were doing homework on them? Top podcast, lads. Big love from Johnny Lloyd. So my question with them meshed together, yeah. when Sonny Bill, you went against Sonny, obviously really good mates yeah. from the Bulldogs, but you end up going to the Roosters. That week, tell me – Fill me in on the uh, – were there any nerves playing the Bulldogs again? The preparation to go against one of your good mates? Mm. And good mates, and not just mate, yeah. that whole team. And the whole team, but yeah. specifically Sonny yeah. because he was their alpha and you're their they alpha. Build, they build it up. They build it up massively, um, which it wasn't It wasn't that big in my head. Nothing's really that big. The game, okay. The so game, you never get too flustered like no, that about anyone No, I never get too flustered about like opposition-wise, um, other players, friends that I'm playing against. You know, like, you know you're, you're confident in your own ability. And he's confident in his ability. I'm confident in my ability. Like he's going against Rennie and Bobcat and all these other guys, you know. So, yep. you know, um, I, pre I prep good. So I'm confident in, in myself going out there. And you know it's just going to be a collision sport. It's going yep. to happen. Prep yourself for where it's going to happen. So you're going to go in. You're not going out there over half versus half when you're just going to pass it. It's a skill set. Yeah, good point. I'm the dude who sets the tone, right, in the team. And he's that guy. So we're going to meet somewhere. It's just it. It's inevitable. So just play, you have your mindset like that. It's just going into war. It's me versus him. But like we, we still got to win the game, right? You just yeah. don't take things that personally. You still got to go against each other. It's a team sport. It's a team sport. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's not one. It's not a boxing match. Yeah. It's not it. It's team sport. So you just try and you try and win the game. You get, you win little battles here and there. Like me and him, we just went out. We played the game fair. We weren't. It was nothing dirty in it at all. Even when at, when we played at Newcastle, and he's at the Roosters, right? Mm. We just ran at each other. Bang. Just like two yeah. big bulls meeting in the middle, we're just like, it's good collision. Fuck, what do you do? Yeah. You can't win, you can't lose. It's just like he just because he hits so hard, I run hard, and we he he gives it back. You know what I mean? It's fair. Yeah, it's what tip about, the tat. It's not about, like a sorry, man. No, it's not like you're not trying to go at him every single game. They're like you can throw the whole fucking football game off. Like where yeah. is Sonny or where's the guy? You know, like where's JP? Where's Fielding? For my fucking liking, because I want to run at him. Yeah, you'll fit, you'll get the time to run when it, when all the cards are lined for you to run. Mm. Bang, mm. go at it. You know, but it's got to be your time. The timing's got to be right. If you're too focused on one player, you can get licked from fucking someone else. Fucking Everyone's yeah. trying to get you, especially <laughs> in the test match. And then on to like um, playing against JP or Morley or Fielding or yeah. fucking any of those. What you about know, Sonny Bill, Roy Asatasi, frigging um, all, the, all the Kiwi boys. I was that dude everyone's trying to kill. Mm. Yeah. It's like they're going to go off – Let's take Mace's head off. Yeah, so you couldn't particularly focus on one other no, person. No, I'm worried about a whole fucking side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A whole forward pack. <laughs> yeah, Do you know what I mean? So imagine yeah. worried about that. I'm not worried about one particular player. I could run bang, bang, ran straight into Roy Satasi, who can hit fucking way harder than everyone else. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want to run into Razza that much. You what, know? what about the detail of preparation? Did you just say, for instance, I know you got so much respect for Webkey and Petro. Yeah. Um, for you and Ogre, did you ever have conversations or did you put in a little bit more detail on your prep? Uh, watching video on them, and, yeah, and we'll do a lot of prep because, like, you'd, you'd see what position, you know, what hand position they're in, and like where Petro runs on the left, on the when he's on the right side of the field, he'd lean in with a little bit of a goose the step and then bump you. Yeah. So it's like, what's the point of trying to hit that, yeah, right? Yeah. I see him knock out so many people on that side because they'd come up with their head in the wrong way. He'd lean in, bang. It's like hitting concrete yeah. on the other side because he's got the ball in the other hand. You can get more grips, okay. so you'd want to get him on that on on his left side, so you can come at it at a, at a bit better angle. Webkey, you just got to do your best. He's a fucking little tank <laughs> that does not stop, and he doesn't care when he gets hit, yeah. and he will just have a little bit of late footwork, which they all did really late footwork, right? There was not many guys apart from Martin Lang that used to just go straight through you. Mm. Then you could just fucking you could sit anywhere and just get it get at him. 
did you prefer Marty Langs? Because yeah, just yeah, because it wasn't yeah. Right. I mean, like you could, and, but he, you got to respect the shit out of what he did for sure. He was just an animal, right? Yeah. He would just run at you nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. Flick his hair back, talk some shit, do it again, do it again. Yeah. Other guys had a little bit more finesse, a yeah. little bit of late footwork. Ogle was one of those guys. He was crazy as well, mm. fucking maniac. Him and Petro would go at it. Him and fucking Webkey would go. At it. I was a little bit smarter, mm. right? A little bit wider from the ruck, mm. right? Like Ogre, Roy, and all that. They, that's their job. Here. I'll be on the third sort of wave, right? Yeah, I'll be yeah, like yeah. the Carrigan yeah. after Payne Haas and Flegler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, really okay. not silly. You know what I mean? Like it's just like, yeah, I could, but I could, but when I got played in Test now, I played front row. I had to do that job, right? Okay. Club football. Different if I got roles. ten and eight on my back, I'll do that job. Yep. If I got 11, 12, that means I can sit a little bit wider. You got the big dogs in the middle. Get a little bit wider off the block plays and get at the edge. That's yep. my job. Set the edge. Split them up, offloads, all that kind of shit. Go back to the middle. So yeah. it worked in a fucking – when it works really well, you fucking pump teams through the middle, get on the edge, then go back on the long side, and then kick, bang, they're, you're belting them down on the corner there. It's similar to like Penrith used to do. Yeah, Test football is different. I used to play in the middle in the test, but yeah. I always used to defend in the test. So it's just like your head's on a swivel. Fucking Adrian Morley's there. Peacock's there, Fielden's there, they're all trying to take your head off. Barry McDermott, remember that big old poly? Yeah, yeah. Fucking my first test was against Barry McDermott, right? Didn't he, he had fucking one eye. eye. <laughs> 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 shout out to Barry, I know he loves the fucking show too. Oh, yeah. shout out old, Barry. hardcore, yeah, yeah, yeah. pommy dude. Yeah. And when he played fucking against for England, put his fucking bulldog in his eye, a glass <laughs> eye. So I'm sitting there, young 20 year old playing against the fucking, uh, against these big pommies, yeah. right? They were massive, Andy Farrell, all these legends was of the game. Was that to represent like it was the British my first test, yeah, so I was against the British Lions. British Lions, okay. Yeah, so like, um, so we played, he put this fucking thing, I was like, oh my God. I remember what? watching Big Barry on, you know, in Super League and all, just bustling yeah. everyone, now I'm playing against him. What did the bulldog represent? What the was it? British Bulldogs. British Bulldogs, British Bulldogs. British Bulldogs. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. The British Bulldog put that in, I'm just like, I was a young 21 year old, just going, holy fuck. Yeah, that's scary. Me too. It's a scary looking motherfucker too. <laughs> and back then, yeah. he wanted to punch the shit out of you. Yeah. So I was like, oh, you could just fuck off, Barry. Like, just yeah. sort of do your job and everything like that. But it was just such a head on swivel sort of thing, right? It was like, you get the ball here. Adrian Morley's leg speed is as quick as anyone over 10 meters. Yep. He'd match all the backs and everything. So he if you're not accounting for Adrian Morley, so right now, you wouldn't be doing what Adrian Morley does. So a, B, C. He'd be nearly on a four, man. He'd mm. be catching. As soon as you catch the ball from there, if it's a long ball from Bedsy, mm. you're getting cracked in the head. Yeah. Like, that, they, it, it become a bit of a trend, but then yeah. people started exposing then be, it with yeah, the But then you on, just, you'd, I'd end up saying, I would, I would always be looking like that. Yeah. Bang. He, shooter. That's it. Bang. Then, then you'd have to put, put, go back in his little space. Yeah. Right? Because all the big guys in England, they were big guys in the middle. Moz was big, but he had really good footwork and he was really agile. Mm. So you always had to account for Morley. Then, but then you'd have to tip it a little bit and play some football. So most when they started, the forwards started actually playing football back in the mid two thousands. Moz sort of had to go back into the middle a little bit more. Yeah. So then he'd really fu he could fuck you up anyway. Yeah. Right. JP wasn't. No one was as dangerous as Morley. Yeah. Right. I wouldn't really account for anyone apart from him. Gordon Tallis was another one. Yeah. You have to fucking account for Gordon Tallis. Where Tullis. is he on the field? You have to account for Tony Carroll. Yeah. And them other guys are like Petra on that. You just you just have to fucking buy, have take your medicine. Cop your fucking hits, and that's it. So, how quickly are you accounting for him? Are you are you rolling on like say just say for instance you're playing at the Bulldogs and and Gordy Tallis is playing for the Bull, yeah. uh, for the Broncos, Ogre's taking a carry. All right, this is this is probably where I'm going to load up. Are you starting yeah. to go? Yeah, well, where's Gordy? It? Where's Gordy? Because you're safe. Yeah. Just safe. It's on the right side of the post. Yeah. There, yeah. you got a six and you got a four. Yeah. he's going to be the he's their right four. He, used to he just was right there. edge back row, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, so he was sitting on that edge there. Yeah, and just like if I get a wide ball from the <laughs> nine, he's going to jam. I want him to jam so I can pass. I'm always He's going to have block shape. I'll go out the back. Yeah. But if it's fucking just me here, and then he might he might come in a little bit. Yeah. Then you, you got you really got to account for him. But if I've got if you got support, then you can't do shit. If you're one out, yeah. he will fucking pump you. And then yes. on the other side, Tony Carroll's there yeah. trying to just. He, and I'd rather run at the biggest guy than Tony Carroll because yeah. he's got the perfect body to fuck you up. A yeah. six foot guy, guy, six, six, six foot five guy like me, bang in the ribs, pick you up, leg. Bang. I ran him in Origin one time. There's a fucking photo of it. Luke, you'll find it. I'm about seven foot in the air. Yeah. But I got an offload away, so it didn't count, Tunza. It didn't count. And when we got I back, when we, when when we fucking – So when, we, when he hit me and drove me into the ground, I said, I got it away. <laughs> 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 Laughed my ass off. But, yeah. So with, so with that answered your question, you've got to have your head on the swivel. But back then, tests were fucking brutal because you could fight and people just taking each other's heads off. Look at that yeah. test in 06, like what, what we did, when it, me and Field and that. You get I'd be sent off straight away for hitting field in there, let yeah. alone fucking longing and elbowing him in the head. Yeah. But that was just part of the game. Everyone was so desensitized to the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. They just let it slide. Mm. Now, 
That's why Latrell looks like he's such a fucking angry dude because he's built from that sort of shit. He doesn't get to just lick someone. He up just wants to pump fucking yeah. everyone. I think there's a few that would just love to just yeah. have a crack and get it done. Um, Cody Walker, he wants to get So, it. <laughs> boys, Jay Ars and Johnny Lloyd, hope that answers the question. I love hearing those. If, even for me, I enjoy those stories for Mace talking about the, uh, the old era. It's as good as it gets. All right, this one's from Kieran Palmer. Um, I love the insights you guys give on NRL players as you've been there and done it, but respectfully do not review the refs. Given to my knowledge, you guys don't have any refing experience or have an idea what it takes to ref an NRL game. Also, audiences don't have the comms, what input they receive from the bunker, touches, etc. So, first of all... That's why you um, got the shirt on. Yeah, now I've, hey, I've got the, I've got the, shirt, the ref shirt on. I'm actually a, a, a pass. I'm a, I worked, worked at Foot Locker and, <laughs> and I'm a referee basketball games. No, so Kieran Palmer, you sound like you are at least know someone or have done some refereeing in the past. Uh, my knowledge of the game is my 120 games of playing NRL with NRL referees. So I've got a fair idea how to referee a game just because I haven't actually actually refereed a game myself. And I apologize. Well, not apologize, but um, uh, what I meant to say was I was going to review the referees because um, I just want to get a feel for the referees because I, I always feel like I've watched some games where there's been some really bad decisions, but I'm not going to bore everyone's time talking about referees on this show. All I know. This is just for my yeah. own personal data. I want to keep, keep track on it. Right. And then also um, saying that we can't, even if I wanted to do that, right? Because this is mine and fucking Willie's show. <laughs> we can review. We, want. we can review anything we want, and just because we haven't refereed, that's just like saying uh, the people on Channel Nine, Fox, who have Paul played Kent. A, Paul Kent. Why is, why is hey, he commenting? He played a game. I did. He didn't play first grade. He played one one nah. first grade game, hasn't he? Nah, anyway, reserve, so even if Kent he hadn't, just doesn't mean those shows aren't popular. Stephen A. Smith and. In, uh, over in first take, he talks about basketball, talks about UFC. Just because yeah. he hasn't played, it's still just an opinion. Yes. So at the end of the day, it's an opinion. And I'm not trying to beat down the rest. I thought Peter Goff had a poor game. But from my memory, I can't remember Goff having a shitload of yeah. uh, really bad games. So I just want to get some data for yeah. my own. Uh, I'm just going to review it for myself. All I know is Ashley Klein must be old as fuck because he ref me in 2004. Ashley He's got to be up there, man. I, like, I love Ashley Klein. I'm... So I'm opposite, as in... He's a good dude. I don't yeah, know, I don't if you get along with him... I look at his refereeing. I think there was a clip where he looked after... He was the referee <laughs> He looked for, after, in, yeah. yeah you know what, he didn't the, send me off. Yeah. Um, and this one's from uh, uh, Typha. I think this is Tafai P. Hummer. Uh, this uh, could be, a, a, obviously, a mouldy name. Need a longer segment for the talk on ref calls and penalties. Maybe they will watch this video and pick up on calls and not send them to the bunker. It's a waste so, of energy, man. Uh, reviewing referees, like we don't want to do it. That was, wasn't the point of it. I appreciate uh, what you said. So there's two people with different um, views on, on me reviewing the referees. But do you think, um, you know how uh, coaches criticize referees after? Maybe if they had a rating system, just like they do review players, yeah, uh, coaches review be. players. They get a lot of real estate on our newspapers. Keep them in check. Yeah, they need it, mate. Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm not too sure. I'm I, not wasting my energy with the rest. They do their best. They fuck up. It's human error, of course. But like, and that, and that's what or we when 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 it's human error, when they can do better, like yeah. players can do better, like humans can do better. You're gonna get judged on that. Yeah. So as I said before, guys like Kenty and Buzz and all these guys, they can sit there and analyze games if they know what they're talking about. We'll let them do that. Correct. They can do that. They've got their opinion. They're yeah. part of a show. Well, we, we can say what we want about refs. And if I want to critique a referee, what's it that any different to me critiquing a player? Mm. Like it is what it is. It's just an opinion, like I said. Just you haven't refed 100 games, mate. And uh, I haven't ref <laughs> junior rugby league. Or I, I, don't, I don't have the Go bunker in ref my ear. Go down the Clove Ellie Crocs for a couple of years <laughs> and then you can talk, and son. Then I, and then I can talk. Um, all right, this one's from Shire Smokers Barbecue. He always has really good questions. It's making me think a little bit. Hey, fellas, interesting stats from Toto and Edwards. Uh, we talked about their run meters on the review. Mm. How far away do you think teams are from on the fifth tackle between the 20 and 20, basically, finding touch every set to get a slow play the ball? So particularly when you have teams or players like the Penrith Panthers with Toto and Edwards who are running for 250. Fucking forty, mm. respectively, to and three hundred for Dylan Edwards. Where his um, theory is, just say if you're in that middle part of the field, twenty to twenty, where you kick, you could kick the ball to Dylan Edwards because Panthers' defense is so good that he's basically getting it and running it all the way back to the fifty. Where kickers start to aim out, like maybe the thirty, like even though they're past the forty twenty part, they still just try to drop one twenty or thirty meters out. 
Panthers have to bring the ball in, slows it down, get a set line. Do you no, think something no. like that could let's, be implemented? Let's break down the meterage for these guys. Let's not get over. Let's let's not go. Fuck, he's made three hundred meters, right? He's ridiculous. Like he's he's nearly doing that on the average because of the field position and because of how dominant Penrith's system is. Yep. Most of the kickers, when you're coming out of yard, so Cleary's just put his kick in. So he's won the little yardage barrel. So you're getting it from your 10 meter. Putting it's in a the cage. cage kick, right? So these poor wingers on other teams are coming out, play ones and plays twos when Penrith's team are just bashing you. Mm. Good luck getting five meters, mate. Good luck. Mm. Right? You get on your kick. Guess where you're kicking it from? About the 30 to 40. Where's Dylan Edwards catching it from? He's 40. Fucking 20 meter run up before anyone even gets to him. Mm. Around about 10 to 15 times a game he's getting that. So add those fucking meters on. That's 200 meters nearly automatically. Around about there that he's I'd, getting. I'd say a floor of 100 he just, gets off kick returns. Getting, without, without, without yep. getting contact. Without getting contact where other fullbacks are catching it on their fucking 20 metre, 10 metre, like Ponga and that, and getting no field position because they're not winning the field position battle, which they never do. Teams like Mo, like even Parramatta win their field position all the time. Their wingers are getting some decent numbers. Their back five is getting some decent numbers yep, now yep. because they're winning the battle of the field position. So it depends on the middle. So it depends on your middles, where you're finishing on the fifth tackle. If you're over their halfway line, then you get an attacking kick in. If yep. you're behind the fucking – if you're kicking from your 40, you're just trying to fucking get a cage kick in so you get four seconds so your middles can get down there and do their fucking defense. So if you're losing that battle all the time and Penrith's winning that battle all the time, the Toto's, Taruvas and fucking Dylan Edwards and Taylor May and, and Tungos, they're going to be getting over 150, 200 metres all the time. Yeah, but that's what he's talking about with his strategy. But you can't so – why, why kick it out for it? Good luck. And, and then the high risk and reward of trying to kick it out, jagging one, getting one, getting out, one in out in the full, yeah, you're okay. not risking it against anyone like that because yeah. it's just fucking straight back on that on your mark and it's just a waste of time. No one's going to do that. And their pendulum's probably their so pendulum good. Their pendulum is the best. Yeah. You cannot fucking even nearly find ground with Penrith if they're that good. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So okay. there's no point trying to kick that fucking ball out because you're risking kicking out the full. The amount of kick pressure that they put in from marker and there's no more blockers or anything like that, get it out of your fucking game. Yeah. You just got to fucking try and win the field position and go at it. And that's why Penrith are fucking kings. You know what they're kings at as well? And, and obviously, 100%, I agree with you, everything you said about them defensively. But you know what they do better than anyone? Dylan Edwards, Toto and Taruva. They don't fuck around. They take the meters. I love it. I'm not taking any disrespect from the yeah. meters. They take what they've been given, but I'm only just telling you why they've been given so much. They've got 10 meters before someone even gets down there. They yeah. drain other teams. They're way fitter than them. Yep. Dylan Edwards don't stop. He's a proper dog. Mm. He's getting to 300 meters because he gets everything on the full and he takes those meters and he takes his hits. Yep. But he's just getting more opportunities than the guys like the Pongers, um, all the guys in the bottom four sort of side. The Bull is never going to get those. Um, the kid from the Titans aren't going to get those opportunities. You know what I'm saying? Like Blake Taft's not really getting those opportunities. Any all the bottom four, six teams at the moment. They're on the back foot. You're getting back footed all okay. the time by the better team. So you're yep. just getting fucking smashed through the middle. Yeah. And then your back five's getting bashed. You know what's an underrated carry too? So obviously you're right. I think on a an on a on a average game, Dylan Edwards' floor would be about a hundred meters before contact mm. on kick returns just because Penrith is so good but you know where he does some of his best work play four yeah so off the he back does, of doesn't he yeah so off the back of there you know once they get momentum they might you know kick return Toto, Taruva, Fisher Harris, Yo and then they get to tackle four and he's really good at taking that carry sometimes he gets in between the like just behind the markers to get Nath a good kick yeah and then it's rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Yeah. But he can get about 10, 15 metres on that play four carry well, it's sometimes. It's awesome too what they do. And it's a game plan because oh, yeah, you don't really plan. want your full back in the line anyway. They revolutionised the, the kick return game. And, yeah, and, that pendulum and, is ridiculous. Oh, yeah. So good. Um, all right, mate. Um, speaking of the team that they played on the weekend and they did a really good job against the Broncos, uh, but despite – uh, the Broncos' slow start to the season. Uh, a few people at the club have been reported as deals done. Uh, Walshy, it was announced no. that Walshy was is very close, but he shut that down and said there's nothing official yet. Uh, very similar to what you know, sort what of. Why? I think they must have agreed to terms, but not signed. Mm. I guess that's the that's probably it. Uh, but. One extension that is confirmed is Kevy Walters has been extended to 2026. That's awesome for Kevy. I love Kevy. Um, I think Dobbo, Ben Dobbins, come out with something really good. He said, you know, he inher inherited a wooden spoon team. True. Hardly any players. And what he's built in the last, you know, three years is a premiership contender and a juggernaut for the next five years. 
And for him signing there, it's it's massive trust with the Broncos. He's got a fucking great core to work with. Uh, they yeah, probably Reece need Walsh even not even considering talking to other clubs. His massive respect for Kevy and where, what he's doing. Carrigan, all these guys signing with him. Yeah, they're signing with Kevy. Yes, you signed with the coach. Yep, you want to know what you know. You want to know where you're going, and I've they trust been, him. And they're going. All right, let's go, Kevy. Let's yeah, win I, a couple. I've been critical of Kevy in the past. I thought he was always just a, a really good assistant coach. I still would like to see him get over the hump with the talent that he's got. Yeah, I think that's a grand final. That's a premiership team which he's got, despite all the losses that they've had through injury and our players moving on. But he had, does have a roster that any other coach would dream to have at the moment. He's got two solid middles. He has a premiership winning half on the back end of his career. And he's got probably two of the biggest X factors in the competition right now in Reese Walsh and Ezra Mam. So he's got everything there to get the job done. And you know what he's changed as well in the last three years? Everyone wants to be a Bronco. Yes, young six, kids coming six through. Six years ago, people were leaving that system to go somewhere else. Melbourne. Never, ever happened. Yep. It never happened. That's why guys like Gordon Tallis and all these greats were rolling in, just yep. going, what the fuck? People were leaving the Broncos? You grow up in Queensland wanting to play for two teams, the Broncos and Queensland. Yeah, That's it. Yeah, You do not go down to Sydney. You do not go up to North Queensland or anything like that. You stay in the Broncos. Now, I think that's flipped. You, it's gone back around again. Kevy's gone that. Everyone wants to be a Bronco again. So that's yeah. a big, big cultural move. Yeah, you're right. I think um, in particular, the Broncos have reestablished themselves in Brisbane. Big hitters. And, and making sure that none of their best juniors leave. And I think Todd Payton's doing that in North Queensland as well with yeah. the nursery that he's coming through at North Queensland. He's really really identified the North. Yep. And they're keeping on they're, – they're holding most of their best kids as well. It's good. So, it's good for Queensland. Um, yeah, some, Just make them heaps stronger. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> No origin just chat. Keep, just, no you know, origin chat. Just keep reading unbelievable footballs. All right. Let's go. Uh, let's get into uh, previewing the round. But before mm. we get into it, Mace, I am going to give you my Levels Bets Friends special for this week. So you can find this on the Tab app. Uh, I am going to upload that to uh, our channel, which is the Levels Bets Friends channel. Uh, this week, the game that I'm targeting, mate, is the Sharks versus the Raiders. And uh, the Raiders, the Sharks, sorry, are missing a whole heap of middle. So I'm going to go the Raiders yes. plus four and a half. And we talked about him in the review of the game. I think Matty Timicor is on the verge of becoming a premier center if he's not already there. So I got him to score in the first 60 minutes. And the Traders have given us a price of $6.50 with a max bet of $25. So after the show, I'm going to upload that into our Bets Friends channel. So go on. You can copy that straight to your slip and have a little nibble on that responsibly, of course. Um, all right, mate. Let's get into previewing the games. Kicking it off with the Sydney Roosters against the Penrith Panthers. And there is a pretty big out, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sam Walker has been cleared to play after uh, basically getting the all clear from two independent doctors, Mace. Yep. Uh, it, they deemed him Category 1 originally that's alive the bad one, right? during the, the game. Bad one? That means that's an automatic 11 days, but they got two independent doctors to review it and then obviously assess Sam Walker, who had been cleared by an independent doctor on the game, like straight after yeah. the game. So with that rule, Matt, I'll, I'll yeah, clarify you, that. A lot of people think the Roosters are, are getting – Beneficial treatment, again, as per. But if you know the details of it, so um, basically if you show signs of just completely being knocked out, yeah. then it's category one and that's an automatic 11 days. Fair enough. Sam Walker gets hit in the neck uh, from uh, Jack White and he sort of stumbled around a little bit, but he was always sort of grabbing at his neck. He obviously got hit um, fairly hard yeah. in that position, which rattled him. Uh, he comes off the field. The independent doctor, not a rooster's doctor, uh, goes through the process with him. He's cleared. He could have come back onto the field realistically if it was only a Category 2, mm -hmm. but um, that wasn't the case because it was Category 1. They appealed it. They got two more doctors to look at the case, and uh, he is right to go this week. So I've got no problem with it. Uh, his halves partner, Luke Keery, who's actually coming back from a HIA, is good to go because Sandon Smith yeah. is out. Uh, he had um, a syndesmosis injury, I believe, or ankle lower body injury. Uh, Lindsay Collins is also out. Jesus. He's been replaced uh, at prop by Terrell May with Egan Butcher, the new name on the bench. As for the Panthers, huge one. Nathan Cleary is set to miss four weeks with a hamstring injury. Uh, while Scott Sorensen was also missing in this game. So Brad Schneider, uh, who has just spent uh, some time in the Super League, comes back into the team. Luke Garner will go to the starting lineup. And Maverick Guy, the son of Mark Guy, will yeah. make his debut, mate. Well done. 
There's some big losses there. Um, the Sam Walker one, him walking off, I could, like I could see that he wasn't he wasn't injured like HIA was. So I, that's, a I, fair, was that's a fair call. Yeah, like, don't try and think. Oh, pulling pulling strings to get you know. No one's fucking with people's brains these days. Um, Cleary's <clears> a massive loss. I'm just simply going with the Roosters because because of Cleary. That's yeah, it. I'm with he you. just holds so much energy. He's the best player in the world. Um, but that makes you know the six Jerome Luai. It, make, mm. it makes him dangerous, right? Because yeah. he can he really loves these moments and his record without Cleary is. Is up there. I'm not. I'm not sure what it is, but I think he's won more than what Cleary has won without him. So you know who really steps up in this moment? Dylan Edwards. Uh, yes, <laughs> but Yo through the middle. Yes, Yoey. Yoey really steps up. Yoey always has man of the match performances when Nate's out. I just think he'll be nullified in the middle there because okay. of Victor Radley. Yep. And Hargraves, Terrell May's been good. Tupanua, Butcher, they got they got a good middle. They, okay. they work hard. Will the tab agree with you, mate? Yeah. Their price is a dollar fifty three. The Panthers is two dollars fifty. The line is a try, mate. Five and a half. So mm. you like the Roosters, but do you think they can beat them by more than six? Yeah, I think so. Mm. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm on the Roosters as well. Yep. Um, and my anytime try scorer for this game, I just think he really loves playing at Allianz Stadium. Uh, it's going to be a really good battle, a really good defensive battle between mm. these two. Joseph Manu up against the newly extended Taylor May. I think that's Ooh, going to be a good reckon? battle. Yeah, I'm going Joseph Manu anytime at two dollars ninety, and I like the Roosters at minus five and a half. If the Roosters have ever a chance of getting the Penrith Panthers over the last couple of years, oh, it's now, yeah. This is your opportunity. Because their bench is stronger as well. At home? Yep. I like yeah, them across the I like the, the bench because Connor Watson was playing outstanding last last week. Egan Butch is back. So he's been obviously playing in reserve grade. be filthy. So when they the get the chance to get in there, na, Nufahu? Nafu. Nafu. Yeah. He's a beast. He goes good. Far out. And Angus Crichton. He's a he's playing at the Rabbits a couple of years ago. They got him from the Rabbits. Animal, man. Do you know, like Maverick Guy, Rabbits. he's debuting. Liam Henry, they've played fuck all games, man. Dane Laurie's a small body. I'm not sure where you're going to put him. Eisenhuth's their biggest body. Mm. So they're going to be relying on some big minutes in the middle. Liam Henry's so got look, that dog in him, though. Yeah, he does. He does. But so does, like, Crichton. So does Butcher. Watson. All right. Uh, speaking of dogs, Bulldogs got that dog in him. Rabbitohs <laughs> versus Bulldogs, Friday 4 <laughs> PM at a core stadium. I'm actually calling this game for yeah, SEN, nice. mate, so I'm looking forward to getting out there and watching this game live. The Rabbitohs, Damien Cook moves back into the starting lineup and Saliva Havili drops all the way to 18th man. Hate that decision. I hated Saliva starting on, on the weekend. I leave him on the bench. That's where he does his best work. And now because of the poor performance, he's got dropped all the way out where oh, he is really? a point of difference for him. I hate that decision. That's anyway, so Michael Cheekham and Shaq Mitchell are the beneficiaries. They move into the... Reserves uh, with Sean Kepi also relegated. So uh, the Rabbitohs, uh, the Bulldogs are unchanged. Um, yep. Off the back of last week's win, listed amongst the reserves though, uh, Josh Adoka, who's in the 23 jersey. So he must be close, mate. I know the um, the injury that was ex uh, they thought jo uh, Fox had had originally wasn't as bad. So he must be really close as well. Do you have any information on that? Yeah, if you I think he's a chance? Every time I'm in there, he's always on the – he's getting treatment. So okay. he's, he's working his ass off to try and get back. Um, yeah, but when, with, the, with those – it's not like an AC joint, right? It's ligaments. Okay. You know, the AC, they just they just jab that and you go straight back on. So you need to so build up the strength more around like, that? Like, yes. Like it, it needs to repair. Back, yeah, that yep. stuff. You know, if you can't do this in a game, you know what I mean, or do all these little movements, like you're not going to really play. So um, I like our boys. I think um, we need to really uh, prey upon South's sort of – Yeah. Go after it. You know, like they're not, they're not, they're not their most confident. You know, when yes. they're, they're confident, the most confident, they're hard to beat. Latrell's like really, he's the, he's that dude. But like, only takes one game for those guys, man. Latrell can beat us by himself. Yep. He single handedly can beat us by himself. He's mm. fucking done it before. Well, and I'm very wary of the fact that he's like that, right? Mm. So I just love our boys. I just think like I think they can go on a little bit of a run here. Yeah. Um, well, at the tab agree with you, mate. The, yeah. As as for the line, um, the the Bulldogs are underdogs at two dollars sixty five with the tab. The Souths are dollar forty eight favourites, and deservedly so, based on the history of the last couple of years. Um, the line is plus six and a half, and, and the money has actually been for the Bulldogs at the plus six yeah. and a half. So they don't think if Souths are going to win, they're not going to blow them out just because of all the changes and yeah. all the unrest. Um, the line the other way is minus six and a half. I'm with. I'm, this is a hard one. I've gone against you on this one, mate, but I'm yeah. by no means confident. I'm just purely putting it on a Latrell Mitchell. This will be the last time I do it too. If they if they don't get the job done against you guys and 
convincingly. Not, I don't think they're going to pump you by 40 by no means, 30 or, or like what they've done last couple of years where they've had yeah. really good performances. But I can see winning by a try and maybe kicking away late and – the guy you mentioned, Troll Mitt, any time, 260. He scored three last year and he, mucked around, he was mucking around for the whole game. He he needs to – it's it's a big game for him. So I can see a world in which he really gets uh, gets into his work. So that's where I'm going, mate. But um, yeah. by no means am I confident. You know, we're, well, we're well aware of what Latrell Mitchell can do at the club, you know what I mean? Like, and Cody Walker and Cam Murray and Damian Cook. But they're Jack not Whiten. playing good. They're not. They're, they're down not. on confidence. If they've if they've won two games out of the you know the first three, I'm like, yeah, okay. You probably give the Roosters one a bit of a bit of a pass, but because you know, it's just I don't know. There's an opportunity. There's an opportunity for yeah, us to really yeah. go at it, right? So and I think we're going to, to go full force. Okay, uh, the next one is the Brisbane Derby. We talked about him before. The Broncos versus the Cowboys. This would normally be a cracker, but there's so many. I'll be there. Oh, I'll you're be out get, there. Oh, I'll that's right. Tomorrow, yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> Nice. You're gonna, are you going to yeah, actually to the game? Yeah. yeah oh, awesome. It's, it's, um, all right, mate. Uh, obviously, Reese Walsh. They got a sweet and everything. I was like, oh, fuck it. Fuck. The first world problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to, but we got I a sweet. Want to go, I just want to sit at home and watch it. Yeah, it would be. In the yeah, hotel, just like, just for, chill. When you go, so for people that don't know, when Mace goes to these sorts of events, he yeah. just gets his ear chewed off yeah, the entire time. Yeah, it's just non stop. You don't I get, get to watch the game, game, mate. Yeah. No, that's, that's the thing. So, um, yeah, so the Broncos versus Cowboys. No Reese Walsh uh, with that facial fracture. Uh, it's apparently it's not as bad, or he's not going to have surgery, so he could be back a little bit quicker than expected. Um, so Tritty Saylor is going to be taking his spot. And speaking about getting, speaking about getting back quicker, is Adam Reynolds who returns uh, with Jock Madden making way. Jaden Hunt comes into the back row for Brendan Piakura, who injured his ankle mm. at training. And veteran Corey Oates comes onto the bench. As for the Cowboys, Zach Labert was a late scratching last week, so Tom Chester reverts back to 18th man. Um, this is a this Good is a game, coin man. flip, mate. This is a dollar yeah. ninety either way. This is my this is my favorite play of the of the round. I like the Cowboys. I really like the Cowboys. Payne Haas is playing. I'm going Broncos. Simple. Payne Haas. I don't love the Cowboys as much if Payne Haas no, is playing because <laughs> yeah. he, he has so much energy in that team, and and he he gets. Carrigan on that third play, and mm. he can do what he wants. Then, you, so you got Jensen now and Fletcher Baker trying to control the one, the, the first one or two or the second and third. Yeah, they're not usually going to be that quicker play the balls like Payne Harsh. Just Skittles blokes plays the ball. Carrigan gets on the back foot. So I'm like, well, that just takes him out of the game. Of course, Carrigan's going to do Carrigan things. He's yep. get numbers is 80 minutes. He does his thing, but he just won't be as like dominant as effective. Won't, won't be as dominant as he as he would be with Payne Harsh. Yep. Um, yeah, I just and I just like the way to, the the Cowboys are are going yep. and how that their team's unreal. Truth and Salem lo, lo, losing Reese Walsh, he is massive. Yeah, it's like us playing against Melbourne and Billy's out. I'm like, yeah. fuck yeah. yeah. Even if they now put, we're a chance. Even if they put Cameron Munster or Jerome Hughes back there, matter. it's still not Billy. It ain't Reese Walsh. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. he's he's so dangerous. You got to count for him anywhere on the field, mm. right? Like when he's what he did in that first round when he just like took him apart like, against South. Ridiculous! You give him a long four, you get a six-four split, and he sits behind the play the ball. He sees that he's going against your middles. You're not stopping him. Yeah, it's like KP getting the ball. You're like, holy shit! Yeah, he, the, he's the, more dangerous than KP. The fullback positions, yeah, different sort of play. But yeah, I know, I know but like on those long fours, he's different because KP when he's going around the back, he's different. When that Walsh just gets you and just build, smokes you for pure speed, you're done. Looking forward to seeing Tritty Sailor. I'm with you, mate. Yeah. So I'm going to go. So our partners, the Tab, have it at $1.90 coin flip. The line is minus one and a half towards the Cowboys at $2. That's what I'm going to take. I'm going to take the minus one and a half. And I've got a price of $3.25 for Jeremiah and I, who loves playing at Suncorp and scoring tries for fun. Um, and I think he's been on fire to start the season. So I'm going to stick with Jeremiah. Well done, and Tristan Sailor, too. Yeah. Resilience, perseverance. Um, sticking with it. Um, hopefully, he gets about a month of really good football in him. Yeah, I see. Proves to everybody that he's a first grader. I think he just loves Brisbane because I reckon he could fit into any other team. Yeah, there's in definitely there's you know, definitely a few a, options where he could play elsewhere for you know, sure. If he plays, if he kills it for four weeks, and then he can force their hand and be on that, be on the um, seventeen. All right, mate. Just the two games on Saturday, kicking it off with the Dragons versus the Seagulls, with the game on Easter Monday, Tigers versus yep. Parramatta. So the only two games on Saturday, kicking off at five thirty PM, Win Stadium down in Wollongong. Dragons. All right, so they get a few ins back uh, in the forward pack. Frankie Molo, Jacob Little, and Jadam Sewer are all back. 
Therefore, Jack DeBellin, Jesse Marshke, and Raymond Fatella Marino all moved to the bench. What? And Hame Sale is back from a hamstring injury, and he's also on the bench. So a few dropped out. Uh, as for the Seagulls, one to watch out for. Tommy Talao was again listed amongst the reserves. You talked about it. You thought sort of one of the weaknesses will be on the wing. So Raymond Tui, mm. Marlo, Vega retains his spot on the wing, but don't be surprised if Tommy Talao is thereabouts. As for uh, another number name in the reserves who uh, comes back from his suspension from uh, the trials is our boy Toa Fofoa Sipley. So looking forward oh, to seeing nice. Sips. If he doesn't play this week, getting back into the team at some point, I think uh, – I love Sips and I think he's part of our best rotation. Yeah. So um, our partners at the tab have the Dragons $3.25 underdogs at home. Manly are very short at $1.35. I know it's a really tough place to play down there, so I'm interested interested to see how, where you're going to go on this one, mate. Oh, the man. line is seven and a half. Manly all the way. All the way. I just think whatever – that first, what, 25 minutes or whatever, like – that was dominant, man. Mm. They can, sh- and I think they'll just get progressively better and better and string in like just say seventy minutes like that. You're not worried that they dropped off though, no. like all the even though there was a few calls, they mentally dropped off. I and just, just think that get back they'll just on. get stronger because they'll understand when we dropped off, why we dropped off. When you got leaders like Trebojevic yep. and and DCE, then I that identify why and when and what we can do to get out of it. You just get better. Okay. And then Tommy's like he's going to take control of that sort of stuff as well. Like they had the foot on the throat, man. It's mm. fourteen nil. Yeah, you're right. And Dragons also had a really big lead and yeah. lost it even worse. And I just think I think Manly are a way better team. They're going to get big boy Harmole, bigger Schmole out there. Get him more ball. Ooh. Get him more ball. Well, I love that, Mace, because he is my play. I want him to fucking get – I want him to get 20 touches. Seven carries for 77 metres. And I know the game, you know, sometimes you just can't get in the game as a back row. You're not really getting on the open side and you're on the back foot when Parramatta had all that ball. But DCE, get the boy the ball. I think he will, You're mate. Th- <laughs> get him the ball, man. So uh, poor Tanner Boyd had lined up against Viliami Kikau on the weekend. Yeah. I'm looking at that edge, and he's been pretty good to start the season. Kyle Flanagan is left edge, marking up he's on Big Homoly. He's going to get He's going to get some traffic. Yeah, he's going to get some traffic. <laughs> Manly minus seven and a half for me, dollar eighty five. Oluquatu anytime at two dollars sixty. I really like my anytime try scores. I haven't gone too willy nilly this week as well. I think I've got some. Uh, it made me focus. I only hitting one from eight last week. Didn't sit well with me. So uh, I'm trying. I'm trying mm. to uh, get back on the board here. Uh, Saturday, another really interesting game is the is the second game on Saturday as well. The Gold Coast Titans head home to the Dolphins, who have had the bye. So no Tino has done his ACL, but looks like. Uh, well, not looks like. Jaden Campbell has been named to return and David Fafita is 18th man. So, Ooh. therefore, Keno Kinney uh, is not in the team and Keenan Palacia comes into the starting lineup at prop with Joe Stimson, the new name on the bench for Tina Fasil Malali. But do we think we're going to see David Fafita, mate? Ah, oh, man, I'd love to. Mm. They said it was going to be about, what, two or three weeks? Yeah, maybe? this is about right. No, yeah, this I'm, is- he's definitely, I'm definitely not rushing him if I'm Desi and he's pretty good like that. Um, if it takes another week, you always used to think when you come back from long term injury or anything like that, when you think you're ready, just take another week. Yeah, okay. You know, if, if, if he's training full with the team and he's getting through all these reps, and, you know, it's, it's not, I'm not sure what sort of injury did he have? I not. I think it was like a strain of some sort. Yeah, so I it's, like, it's it not be. about like just getting straight line running, linear running. It's about what what's his game, right? He's destructive. He's got people hanging off his hamstrings and calves and all that kind of stuff and gro- You know what I mean? So he's got to be able to go into contact with the confidence that he can come out the other end. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So if he, if he doesn't have that confidence as a ball runner, take another week. All right. So, so just, what did know. he have? Uh, this is da, 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 shoulder, partial pec tear he had. Well, so that's what he had. Legend. Yeah. You wouldn't be – defense is – like that's what I'm saying. You cannot train for NRL speed. You can't. Yeah. Like even like in defense, you're just going to be really tight. You know, he's going to be exposed out there like that. What's going to happen when they come off his inside? You know what I mean? Like it's just, you know, it just – you would be taking another week or two, I reckon. All right. As for the Dolphins, Ray Stone returns and replaces Mudders Wallace on the bench. Uh, the bye means Cody Nicarima, who was um, ruled out of the game before the bye. HIA is good to go, so he'll be playing six yeah. and partner up with Isaac Atoll, who just got uh, yeah. upgraded nice. for another three years. It's good. I think that's a really good signing for the future for of the him. Dolphins and for him. And they can take a little bit of pressure off. I think he can play some footy. Uh, the Titans are $2.15. The Dolphins are $1.70 with the tab. They're favourites, even yeah. though it's at Gold Coast. And the line is yeah. two and a half. You're on the Dolphins, mate? Yes, yes. The Dolph Lundgrens? Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the Dolphins as well, minus two and a half. And I think 
I always, whenever I think of Gold Coast Titans or or Gold Coast games, I always just feel like there are a lot of tries, a lot of people breaking through the middle. Could be like a thirty-eight to thirty game. Yeah. So give me Hamaso Tabuai Fido at two dollars twenty-five. I think he just scores in most games, and this is yeah. a game where defense ain't going to be the priority for these two teams. I think there's going to be some. Points. And if you are, if it is defensive orientated, the Dolphins can defend better. Yes. They can. They can really muscle it down and play that boring sort of football because they've got those old heads in the pack. They can still yeah, the get OGs, it done. They Jesse can still Tomlidge. get it done. Yeah. So and like look at look at look at the uh, the pack on um, Titans. Fodawaker, Chris Randall, Palacia, Haas, Firmal, Joel. Mm. There's probably 400 games in between all of them. Yeah. You know? Like yeah. it's not that much. Yeah, Jesse true. Bromwich has played more yeah. by himself Pretty much. than about three of those players. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, that's a good. So point. that's experience. You know? And you chuck Felice Kafusi in there. You know. So. Yeah, I just think experience will get him over the line. Yep. All right, I'm with you, mate. Um, the Warriors versus the Knights are kicking off Sunday, 4 p.m. at Go Media Stadium there over there in New Zealand. Tain Picky is out with the HIA. Therefore, RTS moves to fullback, which brings Adam Pompey back into the centers. Whilst this is, I think, an underrated in, uh, Murata Nikora is set to play his first game of the year. He moves back onto the bench mm-hmm. uh, with Dylan Walker, who missed last week's game, and Wade Egan. So plenty of big ins there for the Warriors. Yep. The Knights, however, they're missing Leo Thompson for that one-game ban on uh, Ryan Pappenhausen for – I think it's a poor decision too. He was all, clearly always looking at the ball the entire time. Uh, you know when – Oh, yeah, Leo that was Thompson silly, man. They and, need to take some accountability. I'm glad they did that. I disagree. Yeah, I, yeah, good, yeah I'm just saying like, – because like – the. What if he lands on his neck and breaks it or breaks his leg or lands weird because a big guy down the field is not even looking where he's going. He's just sort of following the ball next minute. Pappy's making his move. Like, just get out of the fucking way. No, I disagree. Yeah. He, Leo Thompson, you're saying, yeah, but no, I I'm just saying, I said, yeah, yeah. you can disagree, but okay, I'm just okay. like, whatever. Just like, I just think just get out of the way. Leo Thompson was eyes on the balls the entire time. And this is, I think, a tactic. You, you remember he had, it? He had, had eyes on the ball. He did. did he? I, I, I would look, you can't Fuck. 100% say that with conviction, but I believe he did. Yeah. And this is a tactic. You'd, you'd understand this yeah. from Melbourne Storm back in the day. Billy used to go super <laughs> early and karate <laughs> chop. And Pappy wasn't karate chopping, but what you do, if you go early, I seen it in the, I think it was the Warriors Raiders game, mm-hmm. where Jordan Rappin was doing it off a dropout. He was just about to go take off, but because Rocco Berry jumped so early, just as he's about to go launch and go up for the ball, there's a collision before any of it can start. Mm. So what it does is lead to these sort of actions. And I don't want to see Ryan Pappy yeah. injured, like especially with what he's been through. But I think there is a tactic for a lot of catchers to get up a little bit earlier, to therefore get that collision. Engage in contact. You reckon engage, they want to engage on the contact? Engage, engage. Because yeah. I don't think there was no malice in Leo. I don't Thompson. think no, no. I just think like Leo Thompson just didn't know where the fuck he was. So you're saying maybe just, negligent? Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Get him. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because I looked at that and went, he doesn't know. He's got no chance for the ball, and you're going to just be in the way. So you reckon get out of the way, middle? I know exactly where he is. Just fucking move. So you're one game banned for bad footy awareness. Yeah, no <laughs> awareness, Leo. That's what he's getting. He's just got no footy. <laughs> awareness you're gonna have a week just for that shit but i understand why the game's coming down on it right because i get it they do try and engage in contact because billy was the fucking king, king at it yep. he used to come with little kicks and little karate kicks on your chest yep. he used to get away with all that sort of shit yep. but um you can't compete in the ball if he's getting up and no no like no that. no. but like now the i don't think i think the refs are all over that shit with what their fullbacks are doing as well but yep. leo was just like he was doing his thing right but he just got lost he's like yep. right at the end pat and then pappy probably saw him he goes I'll fucking try and jump over him. Mm. And then he didn't know he was going to fall under his legs, Fuck, right? Man, it could have gone really bad. It really looked bad. Yeah. So I just think they're trying to eliminate that, that sort of, that, you know, he could imagine, imagine if, right? It's like the cannonballs. Imagine all these, get him out of the game. Mm. It's just not a football play. But the only, the only problem with it is you, you might, I don't know if you would have seen it, but I believe, I could be, I could be wrong with the players, but I believe it was the Warriors game where it was off a drop. Drop out, and I think Jordan Rapiner. Jordy's good at that Rocco, shit too, Rocco Be- No, it was the opposite. Jordan Rapiner was just about – he was the guy, Leo Thompson. Yeah. Rocco Berry comes in to catch the ball for, off a dropout, and he sort of gets clipped underneath. And originally it was a penalty for taking him out. Once they reviewed it, they seen that Jordan Rapiner was just about to sort of go up for the ball, and then he gets clipped at the yeah, same okay. time. So I remember, again, saying, I remember watching it. And then it goes back to perception. Yeah, yeah that's um, what I'm saying. Like, and, then I, and I just think because Leo's a middle – they're like, you don't know what you're doing. I think because he's happy too because he's a star of the game. <laughs> yeah, that- but, and it looked awful. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But because Leo Thompson has no right to sort of be in there, they just want middles just to fuck off. Yeah. Just, that's, why, yeah. that's why they're changing all these rules. 
Uh, so Brody Jones is a new guy on the bench, Mace. Uh, the Warriors are favourites with all the yins at $1.42. The Knights are $2.90 with our partners, the tab. The line is minus 7.5 about the Warriors. So there's been money for the Warriors minus 7. Do you think the Warriors can beat them by more than 8? Because yes, I feel like you're going easily. on the Warriors. Yeah, I'm on the Warriors yeah. hard. Yeah, I think they'll put a score on. Yeah, I'm with you, mate. I th- I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about the Knights. Yeah. I've this got, should be a good test for them. I've got my concerns about the Knights. It's probably the better thing to say. So I'm... Arts, uh, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, we said that. But him just being a fullback, I just want to see what he sort of, what he opens up. He can attack both sides of the field now. He's not stuck on the left side. He can go right, left, through the middle, be around wherever he wants, support through the middle. Like yep. he is dangerous. I think he's got his legs, he's got his rugby league le- yep. rugby league legs now. A month of footy. Therefore, he can be a lot fitter because you've got to do a lot more meters, man. He played almost 60 minutes in both trials. Yeah. Uh, and now it's awesome. three games. So it's Basically five games into yeah. his return. I'm with you. I think he'll be really good. What happens, Therefore, this, you what know, happens if he kills it? Cuck. Clock's that comes back, surely. Mm, we'll Straight see. in. Warriors minus seven. Uh, you know what? I think internally they're fine with it and they'll definitely make decision go back to Chansey, but the pressure will build from the outside. Mm. The fans. That's where it come from. I'm going the Warriors minus seven and a half. And because Roger Tuovasa Shek is back, I'm going to go Rocco Berry. I think he's going to be a distraction out the back. Remember mm. Rocco Berry runs yeah, all those like nice tight lines. They haven't really been hitting him because they haven't had a true threat out the back. Yeah. Now with Roger, maybe you second guess, maybe yeah, you start yeah. leaning if out. Him out the back. It's just like having Ponga out the back. It's yep. like having Pappy out the back because you get simple the, fact. Distracted. He's very, very distracted because yep. I'm worried. I'm accounting for him. What's he going to do? Because he can smoke you off both feet now. It's mm. unbelievable. So that, those centers and the back rolls as well. Mm. Mm. Back rolls, so they might get some joy. Bradman Best might be going, Roger, Roger, Roger. Mm. Inside shoulder, bang, dusted. Yeah. All right, uh, the second game at uh, 6.15, it's at Points Bet Stadium. The Sharks host the Raiders. I think this will be a good game. There's a few outs mm. uh, for this game, specifically for the Sharks. All their middles, Dale Finucan, Royce Hunt, and Toby Rudolph are all out. Therefore, Kale Iro comes into the centers. Sifa Talakai moves from the centre to the back, back row, row to account. Yeah. Um, Jack Williams moving back into the middle. Uh, Daniel Atkinson and Tuka Hal Tapuha, who played against your Bulldogs, and he's huge, by the way, Mace. He's a big mm. body. He's on the bench now. As for the Raiders, they've got a couple of changes as well. James Schiller comes into the wing position. You hear about Albert Hopawati burned yeah. himself? He could have. Yeah, they'll, he had a cooking accident. That's why he was a. Uh, he's out for this game. Shit, bad. Um, yeah, it could have been really bad. He's oh, sweet, no. but he I think he Damn. burned his, his hands or his arms or something. Yeah, right. And Seb Chris returns from his concussion in week it's two. It's a big in. So, yeah, huge in. He's, he's a really good player. Corey Horse replied for New South Wales Cup list this week, and he's still listed amongst the reserves. So um, right. the bench Bruh. and the starting pack are doing a really good job of keeping an origin player out of the Your 17. Your boy, Timiko, anytime try score, yep. will be going up against a young kid, Iro. Yep. Iro. So that'd be... That'd be a bit of joy there. He's a good kid, but he's going against one of the best centers in the game. Yeah. He's and Talakai's been doing a really good job. At he center. has been. Really good defensively. Now he's going in a couple. That's a big difference with the with the lungs. Might be a bit gassed. With the lungs. That's so you get a lot of traffic. I like Canberra in this one. Yeah, so do I. They're a bunch of dogs, man. They nearly got they nearly got the Warriors over there, and the Warriors were on. Yep. It can be hard to beat, man. Yep. I Stick, agree. He said yeah. a couple of weeks ago this is the best roster he's had for 10 years. Or something oh, like that. Wow. That's you know I'm not sure if it's a slight from the people leaving <laughs> or trying to give his give his um, boys confidence, but they're believing it. Shout out to Jared Croker and Jack White. Yeah, zero work done for those guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just trying to get a reaction. He just the young no, he just wants to get yep. he installs confidence like that when they read shit like that. They're like, oh fucking really? Fuck yeah. Sticky loves us. Yeah, if you're a young kid, you hear that from yeah, you. Yeah, like fuck, he's had because then, oh. then you go through the teams that Ricky's had. Yeah, you run it's through like a brick wall for him. Better than 2019 team. Yeah, shit, well played. Um, yeah, so the tab have uh, the Canberra Raiders at two dollars. I like, I even like Canberra head to head, but I'll take the plus four and a half. Oh, Canberra, uh, about the Canberra Raiders. Uh, and yeah, I like Maddie 13 plus, Maddie Timical. This one, wait, that those middles that they've lost, they rely on Royce Hunt. You very Toby rarely Rudolph. get this wrong. You like, very- it's when when Canberra are on and when, they, when they're when going good, they can put some points on you because you- they don't stop doing their th- thing, they'll yeah. keep doing what they did in round one, two, three, four, and just get better. Yeah, you have a thirteen plus per week, and yeah. it's very real. Yeah. It's very close to the money most of the time. So responsibly, of course. Of course. Um, all right, the last game: Parramatta versus the Tigers. Much improved Tigers in in only one week. So Blaze Talungi uh, moves from the centers into the halves. He's Mitch Moses. 
Uh, how, was how good is that? Like just, you just chuck him from start and left centre to um, just play 5-8 this week, please. And bit, you start as well. Bit of X factor about yeah. that. Uh, as for the wing position, Mike Sivo returns and Bailey Simonson is listed in the reserve. So there's a pretty good chance Bailey Simonson will return. It's been good. Man. Maybe in place of Morgan Harper potentially. Uh, as for the West Tigers, Alex Twole was the only one who's ruled out from last week. Uh, Asu Kapoa takes his spot on the bench. Uh, the Tab have this game a dollar forty-seven favorite Parramatta Eels, two dollars seventy about the Tigers. The line is plus six and a half. So, do you think the Tigers can keep keep it close, or do you like Parramatta? Do you think they're going to blow them away? Oh, this this game is traditionally like one of the best games, right? It's always pretty competitive. It'll yeah. be packed out there. What a what a stadium this is on um, on Easter Monday. Um, I think I'm going to go Parramatta, but I just think it'll be a lot closer than people think. Okay, so you like Tigers plus six and a half? Yeah, I yep. do. I think it'll be really tight. Um, I think Parramatta will try and really flex and go, who gives a shit about your win? Mm. This is the real deal now. And try and go out and blow them off the park real quick. Good battle in the middle. Yeah, be good. We'll be, yeah, I'm, I think Para should win it. I was impressed with Stefano last week, but this is another he's test. He's got to go at it. Yep. He's got to go He's got to go at Reg. You know, those two are going to be going for like an origin spot this year. Yep. I think Stefano, junior off the bench. Yeah, junior off the bench. They're, they're the incumbents. So mm. the young kid wants to knock him off. He needs to go at him. Yep. All the selectors will be watching games like this. They See will. how personally he takes his shit. Yep. Right, you got him and Clem. they got a big job, man. Appy, probably the biggest job. Just getting those boys, getting them, getting them at that level where they need to be to play these big dogs. Yeah. Um, I'm with you, mate. I'm, I'm on. I'm going to keep to this. It served me well last week. Um, I'll dream ball at any time, $2.75. And I'm on the Tigers plus six and a half. I think the Parramatta will get it done in a close one, but I'll take the six and a half yeah, for I'm sure. sure. With, with, I mean, with Moses, I'll be like 100% you're going to Same. It'd be like 32 to 18. I yeah. If, if Mitch but now, because Bla- I don't know what Blaze is like as a 5'8". Imagine if he just comes out and tortures everybody like he's... He's yeah. got that X factor about him. Yeah. I'm so intrigued to watch this game. Yeah. Um, Blaze Talungi and uh, Lachlan Galvin played together at my Automama. What do they call it? Oh, what are, that was way wrong. <laughs> get, get rid of that again. Get rid of that, Luke. <laughs> what is it called? With, Alma uh, Malta. What's Al- it called? Alma Mata, whatever. Alma Mata. I'm not even going to go there. Talk to us. Get rid of that one, Luki. So, uh, <laughs> Alma Mata. Get it actually, right. keep it in. Fuck it. Fuck keep it, it in. Alma Mata. Alma Mata. Is that it? <laughs> when they say something when you play from your college or your, your school? Anyway, yeah. so they went both went to Westfield Sports. We don't have it at Toronto High, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Alma mater. That's it, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, that's, yeah. It. Um, that's one of my best. <laughs> Lock, yeah, so those two young, youngsters going up against each other I will be uh, it, fun How to watch. Good, Zach, for Westfield. Easter Monday. For Westfield's high as well, right? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like just to see those two kids growing up out west, out in Liverpool, you know what I mean? That's where it is. A core stadium, hopefully 40,000 minimum. Crazy, bro. For an Easter Monday yeah, game. Be awesome. Some people coming over from the showground, from yeah, the, the good, Easter show. Even the Good Friday game, the Bulldogs yep. versus South. Yeah, that would be crazy. It's usually crazy there. There should be a minimum of 40,000 each to these guys. I was sitting with Albo last, last year. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Cracking beers with him. What a legend. <laughs> no, it's a combat, isn't it? Oh, so is I it? Said, I I, combat, yeah. oh, sorry. I thought traditionally they played this one at nah, a nah, call. No, we, we, no. The Bulldogs and South always got at a call. Oh, okay. My bad. My bad. So, Luke, you just said this one's at combat. Yeah, uh, we want. Jam packed. Remember, everyone will be playing safe during this footy season, so please keep front of mind what are you really gambling with and if you need free and confidential support, call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. Uh, everyone, round four preview. Ooh. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your Easter. And we'll see Happy you Easter. next Tuesday. Um, because of the game on Monday, we'll be filming Tuesday. The, the pr- uh, review will be up Tuesday afternoon. Enjoy your footy.